Welcome back to Jack Sports. This is the show where we take you through the biggest stories in sports that you might have missed this week. Today's video will all be about my reaction to last night's NBA draft. At the time of recording this video, the NHL draft goes tonight, so next week's video will be my breakdown of the NHL draft. Just before we dive into the NBA, there's a quick little bit of hockey news I want to cover. Jordan Everly was traded from the Edmonton Oilers to the New York Islanders, one for one for Ryan Strom. Artemi Panarin was just traded from the Chicago Blackhawks to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Brandon Saad. More pieces are reported to be involved, but nothing else has come out about that trade yet. Additionally, the Las Vegas Golden Knights expansion draft was Wednesday night. Notable selections was James Neal from the Nashville Predators, Mark Mathot from the Ottawa Senators, Mark andre Fleur from Pittsburgh Penguins, and I will link to the rest of the expansion draft down below. And just some quick contract news before we get going. Royce Lewis was selected first overall by the Minnesota Twins this year in the MLB draft straight out of high school, and he just signed for $6.75 million. A couple weeks ago, we talked about Ronaldo potentially leaving Real Madrid for an 180 million euros. Real Madrid responded by saying that they won't let Ronaldo leave for no less than 400 million euros. And Derek Carr, the Q quarterback of the Oakland Raiders, just signed a record-breaking contract for 125 million dollars over the next five years. And to today's main story, the NBA draft. Prior to the draft, Markel Fultz worked out with the Philadelphia 76ers, and they loved him so much that they traded up together. They traded their third overall pick in this year's draft and a first-round pick in either 2018 or 2019 in order to select him first overall with the Philadelphia 76ers. It's no surprise Markel went first overall. He's projected to go first throughout the entire year this year. I'm interested to see what Philadelphia does with him. They had said they're going to use Ben Simmons at the one. So does that mean they're going to move Markel to the two? Or now that they have Markel, are they going to let him play point guard and leave Ben at the three? In my opinion, I think they should still make Ben Simmons the one, the point guard. And I think they should move Markel to the two guard spot because I think Ben Simmons will move the ball a little bit better than Markel would. And I think that's really going to benefit the 76ers. With the second overall pick, the Los Angeles Lakers took Lonzo Ball. Now, before the draft reports are coming out that they weren't sure about Lonzo, his conditioning was a little bit off. And the entire time I said not to worry, Lakers fans the Lakers will be selecting Lonzo Ball this is just a bluff to ensure that they get him and sure enough they took Lonzo Ball Lonzo to the Lakers is great not only for Lonzo not only for the Lakers but for the NBA it's great for Lonzo because he's playing in LA he's playing for the hometown Lakers which is where he wants to play it's good for the Lakers because they're going to sell so much merchandise Lonzo Ball is definitely the most highly touted most buzz generating prospect in the draft this year largely in part to his loudmouth father but still he's going to sell tickets he's gonna sell jerseys it's great for the Lakers and it's good for the NBA because it's gonna bring people in to watch this kid everybody knows about LeVar Ball I know people that aren't even basketball fans that know about LeVar Ball and they'll probably be tuning in to watch his kid play to see if he's as good as he's touted to be as good as his dad's talked his dad's doing all the talking now it's up to Lonzo to do the walking and I will bet you that Lonzo's summer league games are going to break summer league records just watch people are going to be tuning in in large numbers to see this kid play with the third overall pick the Boston Celtics took Jason Tatum a lot of people didn't have Jason Tatum going that high, but I do remember watching one video where someone said that Tatum would go third overall. With the third overall pick in the NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers will select Jason Tatum. During the draft, it was also reported there was talks between the Indiana Pacers and the Boston Celtics for a trade to Paul George. I thought Jason Tatum was going to be involved and they have so many assets with so many of these first round picks they could send some to Indiana in return for Paul George. These talks stalled and nothing went through and I think Boston really should have pulled the trigger and gone all in on Paul George. If they brought Paul George in, they could have won now. As good a player as I think Jason Tatum is, he's not going to help you win now and your assets, your first round draft picks, aren't going to help you win now either. If they're trying to wait out LeBron James for some reason and just hope that they get really good players through the draft and then win down the line, then I can kind of understand that we could have brought Paul George in one now. We're not even sure if LeBron James will be back in Cleveland and if he jumps to the Western Conference, I don't see anyone stopping the Boston Celtics, especially if they have Paul George. Then if you have Paul George there and you bring him to at least the Eastern Conference Finals, potentially the finals, depending on whether LeBron stays or leaves and how well the Boston Celtics play, he's there in a winning atmosphere, something he hasn't been around for a little while and something he won't get right away in LA. Additionally, now that he's played for Boston, they're able to sign him to the Supermax contract, something that LA won't be able to, and that equates to an almost $50 million difference. That's a lot of money. So you could bring Paul George in, I know he said he wants to go to LA after next year, but you could bring him in this year, show him a winning atmosphere, offer him almost $50 million more. So now you increase the chance of re-signing Paul George, taking him away from LA and helping you win for more years to come. With the fourth overall pick in the draft, the Phoenix Suns took Josh Jackson, the best two-way player available in the draft this year. He can play well on both sides of the floor. The only knock on Josh Jackson is he's not the best shooter in the draft. That's okay. I still think he's going to be great in the NBA. And I have a prediction that he's going to have a good year, but he's going to be quiet. He's playing in a smaller market and he's going to get lost in the noise of Markel Fultz, Lonzo Ball, even De'Aaron Fox, and he's just going to silently have a really solid year in Phoenix. With the fifth overall pick, the Sacramento Kings selected De'Aaron Fox. De 
De'Aaron Fox is the perfect pick for Sacramento. He said he wants to go to Sacramento and help turn that franchise around, and I really hope Sacramento can do that. De'Aaron Fox is a great player and a great kid. He deserves a quality franchise. Scott Perry, the new VP of basketball operations, is there, and I was really impressed with how Sacramento did this draft, and I really, really hope, especially for the sake of De'Aaron Fox, that this team really starts to turn around he deserves it, and I'm really excited to see what Sacramento does in the future. With the sixth overall pick, the Orlando Magic took Jonathan Isaac. He's a really versatile player. Again, pretty good on both sides of the floor. I thought they were going to take Malik Monk. I was wrong. Isaac's still a solid pick. I wish they had a little bit of older veterans on the team for him to play behind other than Eric Gordon and Terrence Ross. Don't get me wrong. I love those guys. I think they're great. I just think Isaac would benefit a little bit more for some guys with a little bit a little bit more experience in the league other than the 26-year-old Ross and the 22-year-old Eric Gordon. Now Minnesota was supposed to have the seventh overall pick in the draft, but they ended up trading it. They traded the seventh overall pick, Chris Dunn and Zach Levine to the Chicago Bulls for the 16th overall pick and Jimmy Butler. That is a great trade for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think it's going to benefit them huge by bringing in another great player. They have a star in Jimmy Butler with two young rising stars in Andrew Wiggins and Carl Towns. And I think it's going to benefit Chicago with a brand new backcourt and it's going to be beneficial for both teams. And with the seventh overall pick that the Chicago Bulls got, they picked Laurie Markkinen, the big man out of Arizona. That's a little bit higher than I thought Markkinen was going to go, but it makes sense. As I just said, Chicago just picked up two new players for their backcourt, a point guard in Chris Dunn and a shooting guard in Zach Levine. And I think Markkinen is going to fit in well there. The big man out of Arizona had a great year and he's going to do well for Chicago. With the eighth overall pick in the NBA draft, the New York Knicks took Frank Nittalikina. I was surprised by that. I thought they were going to take Dennis Smith Jr., but they took Neil Aquina, who is a fantastic player. He's coming from Europe, though, and that's what surprised me, is in the past, the New York Knicks fans have not been very receptive to international players. You can see that with Chris Porzingis a couple of years ago. They took Neil Aquina anyways, and I think he's going to do very well in New York. I think it'll be great to have him there. He's going to be a solid guard, and I hope and pray for New York Knicks fans that they do not get rid of Chris Porzingis. If they're getting rid of anybody... It should be Phil Jackson. At ninth overall, the Dallas Mavericks took Dennis Smith Jr. And that just speaks to the depth of this draft. He's a great pickup at ninth overall. We got to the 10th overall pick and I was excited. It was the Sacramento Kings and Malik Monk was still on the board. That had me thinking, there's a chance that we could have De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk on the same team at the professional level. As cool as that would be, the Sacramento Kings already have a solid shooting guard in Buddy Heald. So they ended up dealing that 10th overall pick to the Portland Trailblazers and returned for the 15th and the 20th overall picks. And with the 10th overall pick, the Portland Trailblazers took Zach Collins. I think he's going to take a little while to develop, but he's a very promising big man. And I understand them passing on Monk. They already have an established backcourt in Portland with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. And I'm really excited to see how Zach Collins turns out. With the 11th overall pick in the NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets took Malik Monk. And I could not believe he fell that far. I had him going six overall, and I was debating with myself if that was even a little bit too low. It's interesting to me that in a league that's becoming three dependent and three reliant, that arguably the best three point shooter in the draft this year fell so far. Now, there was concerns about him being undersized and a little bit concerns that he can be inconsistent at times, but I still thought he would go at least in the top 10 at the very least. But he's going to be a great player in Charlotte. He's proven this year he can play off ball with the very talented point guard this year playing with De'Aaron Fox and I think he's going to thrive with Kemba Walker in the point guard position. The two are going to mesh really well together. With the 12th overall pick, the Detroit Pistons took Luke Kennard. Now when I did my mock draft, I only did the top 14 picks and I didn't even have Kennard going then. He definitely jumped up my draft board a little bit going 12th overall, but as I just said, the league is becoming three dependent, three reliant, and Kennard is a great three-point shooter and he's also got good size for a two guard. With the 13th overall pick, the Denver Nuggets took Donovan Mitchell, the shooting guard from Louisville and that was surprised because Denver already has a pretty crowded backcourt but then I found out that they flipped him to Utah for Trey Lyles and that makes a little bit more sense to me than taking Donovan Mitchell. At 14th overall Miami took Bam out of Io. No I did not have him going that high in the draft but I'm very happy for him that he did. The guy works hard and I'm assuming that he showed up to his workouts and he impressed everyone not only with his skill but with his work ethic and as I said I'm happy for Bam going higher than I thought. With the 16th overall pick in the draft the Chicago Bulls took Justin Patton. Now as a result of the trade for Jimmy Butler he actually ends up as a Minnesota Timberwolves and I think that's great for him. He is a little bit of a raw prospect but I think it's going to benefit him a ton playing behind a young mature star like Carl Anthony Towns. Now as I said earlier the Sacramento Kings traded their 10th overall pick to Portland for their 15th and 20th overall picks and with the 15th pick the Sacramento Kings took Justin Jackson from North Carolina. That's a great pickup at 15. At 17th overall, the Milwaukee Bucks selected DJ Wilson. The team is already long, team's already big, and they just got longer with Wilson. Watch out for this team in the next couple of years. At 18th overall, the Indiana Pacers selected TJ Leaf. I'm excited to see how he does next year. I think he's a good player, but I want to see how he performs without a high-skilled 
guard like Lonzo Ball, someone who's a pass first point guard. I'm interested to see how he does. I definitely think it's going to take him a little bit to adapt to the NBA game, a little while to develop. At 20th overall, the Sacramento Kings selected Harry Giles. Now, if he can stay healthy, this is an absolute seal for the Kings at 20, but an ACL tear on both knees is not promising. At 21st overall, the Oklahoma City Thunder selected Terrence Ferguson. That's the player that, as opposed to going in the NCAA, elected to go play professional ball overseas. He ended up playing in Australia last year. As great as that is for his development, I think it hurt his draft stock a little bit and that if he played college ball, he would have been drafted higher. However, I think going to play with men playing in a professional league in Australia will benefit him and he'll have a smoother transition into the NBA as a post if he played in the college. At 23rd overall, the Toronto Raptors selected OG Anunoby. And when he got drafted, he didn't look excited at all. He kind of looked upset almost when he got picked. And at the time I tweeted, I wasn't sure if it was because he's going to Toronto or if it's because he fell so far in the draft. I had him going a lot higher in my mock draft. I know a lot of other people did too. I think he's just mad that he dropped so far, but realistically he fell into a pretty good spot for him. In Toronto, he'll be playing behind Damari Carroll, who's a solid perimeter defender. And Anunoby is already a good defender himself, but I think he'll learn a lot playing behind a player like Carroll. And Toronto is a great city with a great team and a great fan base. And I think he's going to do well in Toronto. This concludes my recap and analysis of the 2017 NBA draft. Make sure you let me know in the comments section down below who your favorite team is, who they took in this draft, and whether you think they're going to be a good fit or not, and why. Also, make sure you follow me on social media. I live tweeted this entire draft last night, almost a short form version of this video with my recap and analysis of each pick that went up. Granted, I lost eight followers for cluttering people's timelines, but I thought it was worth it. So make sure you follow me over on Twitter at the Jacob Kelly. You can follow me on Instagram at jkels97. And Jack Sports has its own Instagram account now as well at Jack Sport with no S on the end. I tweet clips from these videos and a couple extra pieces of content as well. So make sure you follow me there. I will link to all those accounts in the description down below. Thank you once again for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this video. And I will see you next week.